Hello, and welcome to Archetype Builds. Uh, this is the channel where we take an archetype, usually from fantasy or fiction, uh, and we show you how to create that in D&D for your character. Today, we are going to be looking at the Boxer. knuckled beefy boxer who fights with his fists um anything from mma to uh old timey fisticuffs um so what makes a boxer a boxer um i think a core part of the fantasy is strength right you want to think about um, this person putting a lot of energy into a punch that does devastating impact um there's obviously other character archetypes that have to do with uh, fast, uh, nimble um, punches to strategic positions. A boxer is a big, strong character who is slamming for a great deal of impact. Um, likewise, core part of the build, unarmed strikes only. You're just going straight fist punching unarmed strikes. And this is a combat-oriented build. Um, you know, you, you don't take a boxer into, you know, a, a stressful negotiation. You don't take them to, you know, solve puzzles or, or research or con them. Uh, you take them into fight things. Uh, so this boxer, we're going to try and prioritize getting our damage up as much as possible with these unarmed strikes. Um, finally, I think it is important to be focused on knocking other people down and preventing yourself from being knocked down. This is, of course, how professional boxing works. Uh, if the other person is knocked down for too long, you win the match. So uh, this is going to be a build that has the ability to uh, knock others prone. Ability scores, we're going to prioritize strength consistent with our character concept. I think with the point by system, the highest we could get our strength is 16. So that's what I'll be counting on for my number running and also on the character sheets I put on my Patreon. Check it out if you would like to play this character. We're also going to look to have a very high constitution so that we can weather as many hits uh, by our opponents as possible. We also are going to need at least a minimum of a 13 in dexterity and wisdom. That will come up a little bit later when you're allocating your points. Make sure that those uh, dexterity and wisdom have that 13. So where we're going to start out here with our race, I'm going to recommend bugbear. Bugbears have an extra five feet of reach, which is going to help you uh, punch people from farther away. Um, if that is not to your fancy, feel free and choose anything that gives you strength, like Goliath or Half Orc. Uh, class, start out with Fighter. What we're going to do is we're going to um, start Fighter and grab the Unarmed Fighting Style. This is going to make our Unarmed Strikes a D8 plus strength, which is awesome. Those are like real weapons. with that. Um, right after we're done getting the Unarmed Fighting Style, though, we are going to need to go Monk, and that's why we kept the 13 in uh, Dexterity and Wisdom. The reason that we are going Fighter 1 here is because this Unarmed Fighting Style is such a huge boost to our damage, it's kind of inconceivable to go through these low levels without it. You really do want to start here. Um, we're going to swing Monk next, uh, and that's because Monks have a lot of features that are oriented at improving your unarmed strikes. That's what the class is sort of built around. So I'm sure the question could come up, why not go to Fighter 5 here and get extra attack? But the truth is you can get extra attack from either Monk or Fighter. They don't stack. They don't uh, add to each other. Monk gets more key points by going more Monk. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, since we can get it from either source, we're going to go Monk next, grab those bonuses to unarmed strikes, keep racking up those key points, and make it all the way to extra attack. Um, go ahead and go Monk for your next few levels here. And with Monk, we are going to get Flurry of Blows, which allows us to make 
two unarmed strikes with our bonus action. Other options for key points, I highly recommend sticking to flurry of blows. Rocky Balboa is in serious trouble! Note that the martial arts feature of Monk says that you can use dexterity for your unarmed strikes. Don't have to. Let's not. Um, when you get to Monk 3, go ahead and select Way of the Open Hand. This is going to help us be even better at hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Specifically, we're going to get Open Hand Technique, which says that when we hit a creature with one of our Flurry of Blows attacks, remember we get two for a key point on a bonus action, um, we can either uh, make them make a dexterity save or be knocked prone, uh, make a strength save or be pushed 15 feet away from us, uh, or it can't take reactions until the end of your turn. Um, these are all some great control options. And remember, you've got advantage on prone targets. Um, and we're going to take Monk all the way to uh, level 6, which is when we're going to get our extra attack at 5, and then key field strikes at 6 to make sure that your punches are considered magical, which you're going to need. Making your attacks magical is just this tax that you have to pay in Dungeons & Dragons, especially if you are going to be using unarmed strikes. You see, a lot of creatures are resistant, which means they take half damage from normal, non-magical bludgeoning damage, which we are dealing. A lot of the other classes in the game, and, and indeed uh, this class, but using weapons, would get around this by finding and using a magical weapon down the line but we are just going to be using our fists, which means we're going to be doing half damage or at higher challenge ratings, no damage, because they'll be immune to non-magical bludgeoning damage. So the key field strikes is going to be an absolutely required part of the build, and it's why we took you know as many monk levels as we did. Now that we have those key field strikes, we are free to leave monk and go in a different direction. Cool. Head back to Fighter, grab your Action Surge, and for level 3, get Rune Knight. It gives us access to runes, which are very useful. They don't really fit the narrative of the boxer, but we also are going to get access to Giant's Might. Um, proficiency bonus times per day. Uh, you can make yourself large if you were not large before so you're growing in size you have advantage on your strength checks and strength saving throws and on each of your turns you can deal an extra d6 on an unarmed strike which is awesome for us so let's say you do want to mess with these runes a little bit you are a rune knight fighter you do get access to them and i think it's perfectly okay to say i'm a boxer i punch things i don't uh, do any magic but maybe i found these gadgets or you know, artifacts, maybe this is a one-off trick that you've learned uh, along your travels. By this point in the game, you know, level 9 for your character, you should have a pretty good understanding of how this could fit in if you wanted to make it work. The runes I recommend are the Frost Rune. It's just so flavorful for this character. It gives you a plus 2 to your strength and constitution related checks when you activate it. Very, very fun and useful. As just kind of a, a passive thing, it's going to give you uh, advantage on your wisdom checks and charisma intimidation checks. So you can be intimidating to people, even though you're not a very charismatic guy. Um, I'm also going to recommend, you're just going to have to take the Cloud Rune. Cloud Rune is such a useful tool to pull out every once in a while. Um, when someone is hit by an attack roll within 30 feet of you, you can use your reaction to target a different creature. Um, like maybe you could flavor this as like redirecting their strike to another target, um, just with the strength of your arm pushing their weapon to the side. Um, but regardless, it's, it's this magical trick that you can pull to make enemies hit themselves, which is just amazing. And finally, we are going to cap ourselves off with Fighter 4, getting that strength ASI and bumping that strength all the way to 20. Enjoy your boxer. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you want to play this build at your table, the easiest and fastest way to do that is to subscribe to my Patreon. I've got character sheets preloaded for levels 1, 3, and 10 of this build, and any tier of patron has access to them. So for just a dollar, um, you could break into those character sheets. Um, 
but I would greatly appreciate it if you stay subscribed to continue to get character sheet access um, for the next builds that I do.